Well, you know, the, so the NFL was an interesting time. In the 70s, you, uh, you were a scrambling quarterback with speed. You were throwing the Hail Mary to Drew Pearson every now and then to, to win football games. You went to Super Bowls. You went to Pro Bowls. Yeah, you know, it was the original Hail Mary, too, you know. I mean, people still get confused with Doug Flutie and... Uh, <laughs> But, but that was, after the game, I said I closed my eyes and said a Hail Mary, so that was... Uh, Tell that story. That's the, well, that's the official term of the Hail Mary. We had, in 75, we had a playoff game against the Vikings, and we were behind 14-10 to 10 and really uh, had a chance at the end, and uh, no timeouts left. And I told Drew just to go deep and uh, make a little in route, go deep, and I kind of intentionally underthrew him, you know. Actually, I was pumping the week. <laughs> I was pumping the weak safety off, and I underthrew him. He, <laughs> but he caught it on the hip. He was a great player. Drew was, he, he, Drew was really had great hands, and so he goes. You know, I mean, everybody was shocked. You know, it was uh, about a 55-yard play, and it was 30 seconds left or something. So after the game, and I got hit as I threw it. Uh, I was in the shotgun formation when I threw it, and and I didn't know what happened, and I didn't hear anybody screaming. I said, oh, that's good, because we were playing in Minnesota. Right. <laughs> so when I looked up, I saw Drew in the end zone, and uh, and so, uh, of course, if you're a Viking fan, you thought he pushed off, but he really didn't, he, if you see the film. <laughs> but anyway, after the game, I uh, uh, they were asking me, what were you thinking about, Roger, when you threw the ball? I said, I, well, I don't know. I'm, I was a Catholic kid from Cincinnati, so I... I said, I closed my eyes and said a Hail Mary. <laughs> I could have said I closed my eyes and said our father. <laughs> so really the press the next day, officially, and the NFL recognized it. It's the first time the term was ever used. Right. The press then picked it up and said Hail Mary pass wins game instead of alley-oop or the bomb or you know how that used to be the you know, right. big play at the end of the game. Right. So, um, so you know, I was... Drew and I have been very proud That's of it. Trademark. Yeah, now you hear it in politics, you hear it in business. <laughs> we, need, we need a Hail Mary. You I know? Need to hear yeah, I know, yeah. So, <laughs> but it started in, in um, December 28th, uh, 1975, against the Minnesota Vikings. How about that? Well, you know, that was the beginning of many exciting clips, and it's the reason we're all Dallas fans even to this day. So I want to I want to transition a bit. You, you become a Hall of Famer, your career is completed in 79. The statistics are. Top, top statistics for quarterbacks in the league. Um, your Hall of Famer in 85, but you start your own real estate company. You mentioned it a bit ago. I think the alumni and even young people should understand the kind of initiative it takes to kind of stay on the button, so to speak. So tell us a bit about how you started Stahlbach yeah. Company. You're the executive chair of Jones Lang and Sal today in the Americas, but give people a sense of what that's been like. Well, you know, one of the things that's interesting is, you know, while Roger was a football player and it was easy, uh, you know, really, in a way, it, was, uh, it wasn't because people looked at me as a football player and they, they, they didn't really adjust to this other way of life. And so I, I started from scratch. I started with my own little cube there, my own phone, working for the Miller Company. It was a commercial real estate firm in Dallas. And, and uh, you know, I, I had to do everything everybody else did. I, and I, I was not the starting quarterback, so people knew I was on the team. But I, I might be able to get a phone call more. But, but I still was had to learn the, you know, it just took time. You, you have to pay a price. Yeah and work hard at something, you know, things just don't happen overnight. And, and so I stuck with it, and, and, and right before I retired, a few years before I retired, I, we started, a, a, another person, myself, a partner, we started a small firm in Dallas. Because I, I knew I wanted to stay with the real estate business, and, and if, when I retired, I was gonna, uh, and I wanted to build something. Okay. And uh, so, so the, the fact is, when we started the company, people then realized that, hey, this guy, just hasn't left football, and he's he's been working, and uh, right. so that that's a big difference. You know, you just uh, you know things. You got to work hard for things, and uh, and you got to work smart. And sometimes it takes longer than other times. But that was the beginning, and then for over 30 years, though, you're still trying to make sure you're building a company based on the right values, the right uh, priorities. Uh, we were very customer for, uh, oriented, and uh, you know you have a lot of real estate brokers working for you, and they can become kind of almost a little bit fee and me. Hey, right. what's in it for me? Right. And we were always stressing the importance of, uh, of, of doing the business right, and then also uh, then you'll be rewarded. Right. So, so we kind of built a strong foundation in the Stavak Company. A lot of it had to do with the, the Naval Academy and things I believed in at the Naval Academy, and. Uh, and so we really, um, 
through the years built a, a, a really a fine real estate firm and we were very strong in the U.S. and Jones Lang LaSalle was very strong internationally so they uh, bought us uh, three and a half years ago and you know I had over 300 shareholders in the company. Old, old Raj didn't walk away with the, he, he didn't just build the company. I had a lot of people that built that company and and I, I was in the middle of it every day though and it wasn't just my name on the door and um, so we had a very successful good company and now our platform is even stronger because we have this the the inter, now we're all part of a uh, not only a U.S. company but an international real estate firm. Right. right. Well, I, I can just say personally because we did business together in my prior life, yeah. and uh, it wasn't just real estate service that, that we thought of when we talked about working with your company. It's the fact that you stood for honor and integrity that really made the difference. Yeah. So appreciate all you've done in, in the business world. And you also give back and. You pulled in a lot of directions. I last saw you on TV hugging the Super Bowl trophy in the 2011 uh, Super Bowl game in Dallas when you were the chair of the right. post committee there. And uh, you've done a lot of things in the community. I know for wounded warriors and, and a lot of different things. But you still come back to Navy and give us a priority despite all of the other things that press in on your time for a lot of different reasons. And so you know, I just want to give people a sense of why you give Navy a priority at this point. Clearly, have said, "Hey, I'm coming up on my 50th reunion. It's been a good run, but you've come back to us as a, an active member of the foundation board. You're here for a DGA ceremony. Why still Navy after all these years?" Well, it goes goes back to the important part of your life. To uh, you know, it's you can't do things by yourself. You know, you've uh, in the Naval Academy was the friends I've made here. We're I've still, still we're still very close. Uh, we you know we lost. Uh, you know some classmates and and teammates. Um, part of it was in the war. Part of it's you know, <laughs> the aging process. And um, but there's there's still a close there's a close knit feeling. Uh, even the day when when you know when I've called companies and someone was even from another service academy. There's there's a spree de corps. There's there's a feeling. And of course in the naval academy, it's there's really an extra feeling that uh, whether you're a class of '65 or the class of '95 or 2005 or the class of '45, you know, you're there's 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 just a there, there's just a, a feeling and. In the foundation that, that I have, I attribute uh, 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 to the academy and what it taught me, and the friendships, uh, the importance of uh, of being able to make sure that in life you don't get to where you are by yourself. It's the it's the it's the the, the others that that are part of your life, your team or your classmates, and. So it's just a big part of my life, and but we, you know, there's, there's a, I mean, after all these years, we have a strong uh, uh, alumni group in our class, I right. know, and I think that's true in every class, right. and and so there's, uh, it's just, you know, it's just not me, you know, I'm, uh, I, I was a, I was a football player. That's uh, that's the only thing that really is a little different. I played, and you know, a lot, I hear from the Naval Academy guys when I was playing, and yeah. you know, the cities we played in, and right. I'd always respond and do everything I, I could because anything associated with the Naval Academy was very positive for me. Right. Well, yeah, I, I know uh, in your company, speaking of Esprit de Corps, that there are a number of Naval Academy graduates that you hired and stuff mm -hmm. company, and some of the folks who are even closest to you on your football team, Skip yeah. Moore and Tom Lynch and others. So. Um, I think it's important for young people who are thinking about the academy to know just how tight the network really is over time. Because you've been very loyal to the academy. Yeah, we just hired Jeremy the other day. You know, the, uh, the All American Defensive Act the Navy had. Uh, he got the Roger Staubach Award. He's, right. He, he's actually going to work for us in uh, in Dallas. I'll be doggone. Uh, yeah, I just got the word the other day. We we've been interviewing him and talking to him. He's a great kid. And uh, that's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. So so the the network continues. Yeah, we're we're we have a lot. We have a number of military. We got some West Pointers. Uh, they've paid me a lot of dinners here. We've won <laughs> we've won ten in a row. There, I almost feel sorry for those guys. <laughs> we'll <edit this> part. <laughs> we we <laughs> no, we just had a dinner the other day with two two West Point guys that owed me. Uh, my wife and I, six of us, went to dinner. I said, man, this has been it's been ten years in a row. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we've uh, we we've had you know this. One one West Pointer, he's been Scott Kyer, has been with us for 25 years. So, <laughs> so he's had a rough rough road. But no, we we have Air Force, uh, we have a lot of military uh, in, in our in our company. Yeah, that's fantastic. Well, I think these academies uh, across all services 
are important assets for the country. Mm -hmm. And you are an example of what we call leaders to serve the nation. You are truly an example of honor, integrity, and commitment. And so, Roger, I want to thank you for your time today. Thanks for coming back to Navy, and thanks for all you do on behalf of Navy. Well, thank you, Brian, for all you do. You got you got your hands full. You got a you got a lot of those uh, graduates that sometimes don't agree with you on everything, do they? And, you know, welcome <laughs> to the real world. This is America. Yeah, it's a great country. But you do, we're doing great things in the academy. Is, uh, it's 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 uh, well, the best experience of my life. I appreciate it. Thanks for your time. Okay, okay.